All right, these back people, wonder whatever happens inside a gas furnace when you turn it on. Well, today I'm breaking down the sequence of operations step by step. So I want to step outside and I want to show you an example of each step outside of the furnace of the sequence of operation. So first you're going to have your thermostat, which is going to go to the control board, to your inducer motor, your fan proving switch, then your igniter, and, and this is your gas valve. I don't have a spare gas valve, but usually it'll be 24 volts that's going to open or close your gas valve. And this is your flame sensor, and then your blower motor. First, let's start with the thermostat, just the first sequence of the operation. The thermostat closes R to W, sends 24 volts to the control board. Now let's break that thermostat down a little further. So you have 24 volts at your thermostat that just waiting there. When you raise the set point to call for heat, all all it is, 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 is live voltage sitting there waiting. So when you call the thermostat for heat, it's just going to allow continuity, electricity to flow through the call for heat to go to your control board. This is the outside compressor, Y1, to call for cool. I guess you have a heat pump. It, it could be different. But uh, it's going to stick to a conventional furnace. I can say right now we just got 24 volts just sitting there. And as soon as you call for, for heat, that contact is going to close and allow 24 volts at your W1 at the control board to tell the inducer fan motor to turn on. So inside those thermostats, if it's not calling for heat, it's just waiting on that bridge. It's just up waiting on for whatever you ca you call it for. And then those those set of contacts in here is going to close. That bridge is going to close. And then we're going to get voltage. If we were checking volts from red to W1, you should get zero. Or if you were going from common to W1, you should get 24 volts. So common to W1, 24 volts, that means that's a call for heat. And then our inducer fan motor. So the control board powers the inducer fan motor. That inducer fan motor clears the heat exchanger of leftover gases, and it creates the proper draft for combustion. The inducer fan motor is the furnace's lungs. It clears out old combustion gases and prepares the system for safe ignition. Now, these are your pressure switch. But some people call them vacuum switch, pressure switches. Uh, some um, come like double like this, but it pulls into a vacuum looking for negative pressure. As you can see on here, this negative point. 6.5 and this one is negative 0.35. This one here is a negative 0.27. So when you troubleshoot these, you got to get the correct uh, vacuum. And you see on here, normally open, normally closed. Normally open, normally closed. So normally, this switch is normally open. So once we get the correct voltage, the switch is going to close. And go back over here and show you the same. So you can see on the pressure switch where it says normally open. So same technique as the thermostat. If this normally open, that means that inducer fan motor is not on. Once that inducer fan motor kicks on and pull up in the vacuum, as this switch says negative 0 0.2, now you're going to close that contact, and, and that means that's the fan proving switch because it proved that your exhaust fan closed and it's safe to run. 
if, if this was a normally closed, it would be closed. And then once it proved, it'll open up. But pressure switch is normally open. And then once it closed, when it fully sucking into a vacuum, because on your exhaust fan, you can have a structure or, or anything in, in here. Bird nest can be on the roof. And if it doesn't sense or any kind of debris, I've seen walsh nests, a bunch of walsh's and everything inside that flue pipe. If it doesn't uh, pull this pressure switch closed, whatever parameter is set for, um, it would not go to the next sequence. When it, when it does prove, it's time for the ignition in the sequence. And depending on the furnace type, it can be a hot surface igniter that, that glows, or you can have a spark ignite, uh, ignition that fires. But once the furnace knows it's safe, it lights up the flame using either a glowing igniter or your spark igniter. It's like I say, this right here glows up. A quick way to check if this igniter is good or bad, you put your meter on continuity and you should get a beat. So you just stick one probe on this end and one probe on this end. And you see, I have 15 on my meter. I do not, if you have, if it's not beeping or you have OL, that means this is damaged somewhere up in here. All right, so my apologies. Like I say, I do not have a real gas valve, but when we go to the furnace, I can show you one that's inside the furnace. But stay tuned, we're gonna go up in the attic and run the sequence of operation. But our next step, once the igniter uh, turns on, is the control board is going to send 24 volts uh, to your gas valve. So 24 volts will come to your gas valve here. And first your gas valve is going to be closed but when it's safe to run, when the igniter lights up or glows or sparks, you're going to get 24 volts. It's going to open that gas valve to allow gas through. And when that gas flowing, flowing through, that gas is going to be flow, flowing through the burners and the hot surface igniter is going to glow light up and then that's when you get the flame to, to warm up the heat exchanger and while it's heating up that heat exchanger with that flame the flame sensor here is going to detect flames through microamps and we can do another video on how to check microamps but this should send a signal back to the control board and that control board is going to confirm that a flame is present. If there's no flame, that gas valve is going to shut off. If the furnace doesn't sense flame, it shuts everything down to prevent raw gas from flowing. Like I say, so when that heat exchanger does start warming up, the burners continue heating the heat exchanger and we got a fan delay timer that's inside that control board as well. And that's just to prevent from blowing cold air. So the furnace going to wait until the heat exchanger is hot enough before the blower turns on. So this is the last sequence of the operation. The blower pushes air across that heat exchanger. Warm air goes into the duct and the home or business begins to heat. And whatever you got your thermostat set to, the thermostat is going to open up. So once your thermostat satisfied, it say if it's 62 inside and you got the heat set to 61, that means the contacts is going to open up. The bridge is going to open up because the thermostat has satisfied. 
And usually when that thermostat does satisfy, the blower motor has a little off delay on it. So the blower keeps running, removes leftover heat from the exchanger, and then it'll shut off. So that blower gonna run a little longer to capture the rest of that heat. All right, so now we're at the furnace. I'm gonna actually show you real time of the sequence of operation in a gas furnace. Have you made it this far? If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. Also leave in the comments, give me feedback. If these videos are helpful or if there are any, any other way that I can uh, film these videos uh, to make it more understandable. Uh, Cause I'm actually a technician. I've been in the field about 13 years now. So I'm really not an instructor. I just kind of know how to do it. Uh, uh, I learn from books, textbooks, in the field experience and all that good stuff. So if I can make these videos more helpful and explain it, cause I, I try to explain it to where anybody can get it. So just give me a uh, feedback. It will be appreciated, but let's go through the sequence of operation. All right. So this is the thermostat right here. I'm gonna put it in heat mode. You see, it's set for 71, it's 73 inside the house. So right now I have my meter leads on red and W1, I have 28 volts. That means that contact is open at the thermostat. Like I was explaining earlier, that when those contacts close, we should get zero volts. So really you got 24, 24 volts just sitting there. But with your meter, when it, when it calls for uh, heat, that, that bridge is going to close and that's when you're going to get your 24 volts. Uh, if I put this lead right here from common, you see I, I have zero. Now, I'm going to raise the set point at the thermostat. You're going to see this is going to change. I go from zero and just click. I got 28 volts. Here my inducer motor. Hope you can hear that. That is the inducer running. You can see it spinning right there. All right, so I'm gonna pause it. All right, so we have our thermostat. We have our control board. And then we got the inducer fan motor. You have your pressure switch or your vacuum switch. I can say inducer fan motor, this pressure switch is all, pretty much all in one. This is the uh, flue pipe. I was saying going to the ceiling or out the roof. And sometimes they can get clogged up. Uh, birds get in there, waltzes, you name it, squirrels. Like I say, if that's stopped up because you don't, Carbon monoxide or any, anything can uh, get in there if you have a crack heat exchanger or whatever. So once that proved, that's your switch right here. I think this here has a, a spark igniter. You have your flame sensor. Got your gas valve. Right. And of course your blower motor. Let's go through the sequence of operation. Our unit is pretty much the same. You see, I want you to pay cl close attention. This control board here has a zero. That just uh, pretty much stand by or idle. You're gonna see once we go to the thermostat and call it for heat, the current temperature 73 inside the space. I'm gonna set this to 78. And that's when our RW1 that you see on the control board, it has an H. Sequence of operation, we got our inducer motor. You can see it spinning. And once this switch proves, the, the pressure switch, you're gonna hear our igniter.
That's the igniter. Hand plow handle. The plane system. And how we know that when that flame sensor goes long enough, that delay that blower motor relay gonna kick in. That's our blower motor. So, so I'm, I'm gonna satisfy you at the thermostat. See when everything kick off once it's satisfied. I, I just set the. So I just set the temperature down to 71 and 73 in the space. As you can see, the flame. No more flame, but we still got blower motor. Cause that blower motor going to have a delay on it. And you see, zero is not calling for it no more. So I'm gonna let that blower motor kick off. We're gonna go through uh, one more time because I think I have maybe bad uh, angles. You can see the exhaust got the rest of that uh, exhaust out of there too. All, all the extra gas that was in there, and that's why you got delay on that inducer motor. But I'm gonna let it satisfy, and I'm gonna call for heat again. All right. So the blower just shut shut down and I'm gonna call for heat again. I got it set for 71 to 73 in, inside the space. I'm gonna put this to 77 and you're gonna hit, hit click. Okay, it's called for heat. That's all inducer. If it, if it pulled the correct volume at negative 0 0.30, that switch should close. Those contacts, normally over contacts are closed. I don't know if the microphone is going to pick up, but you're going to hear the hot surface igniter. Gas valve. I hope you heard that hot surface igniter. And then that flame sensor. And that's the heat exchanger. And it, all that heat exchanger like a shell. Once it gets real hot, it, it's just a metal that's warming up. And that fan is blowing, not the flame. Don't worry about the flame. The, the blower motor is not going to put the flame out. That blower motor is just pushing air across a hot piece of metal, which is your heat exchange. Blowing it into the system, throughout your duct system. That's the furnace sequence of operation. Uh, thanks for the subscribers. Suggested I make this video. I hope this helped. And um, wishing you a great career in HVAC. All right, HVAC people, we out.